Welcome to the top 10 Zetas video for December 2018. That means next month is January of 2019. I'm going to have to remember that. So people ask me, why do you do a top 10 Zetas video every month? One, it's a reminder for the characters that you should be striving for and the Zetas you should be saving up. Two, the list does change some. It's not exactly the same every month. Some characters do change in the honorable mention and in the regular list. And three, a lot of the characters on here are very viable at three or four stars with their Zetas. You don't have to have them maxed out, so you, sh so you should strive to get them. The list is in no particular order because it's based on where you're at in the game. So first person we're going to look at is Jedi Knight Revan. When I read through all of these Zeta abilities of all the characters here, I'm not going to read the whole ability. I'm just going to read the Zeta aspect of it. So we have Direct Focus. Add buff immunity for two turns, which can't be resisted, copied, or dispelled, and increase their cooldowns by one, and stun the target for one turn. If, they're n if they don't have Foresight, you're, you're automatically going to get the buff immunity for two turns, which is huge, and it can't be copied, dispelled, resisted, whatever, but to be able to increase their cooldowns and stun the target, man, it's a game changer. It doesn't work as well against Jedi Knight Revan teams, but you still need to use it um, to be able to increase your cooldowns at times. That's why this is probably the most important um, Zeta to have if you're looking to dominate an arena. If you have the other two Zetas and not this one, you can win, but it's a little bit trickier. Next, we're going to look at General of the Old Republic. Add whenever a Jedi ally attacks out of turn, they recover 20% of their max protection and deal 35% more damage. When a Jedi ally uses a basic ability on an enemy with bonus protection, reduce the target enemy's max health by 10%. This is stacking. It doesn't work against raid bosses. Jedi allies begin the battle with tenacity up for one turn. This basically makes Nest unusable anymore against Revan teams and with the change that they kind of used to nerf her she's not a good Revan counter she used to be she's not stay away from her when you're going against Revan and then last but not least his hero ability add Jedi Knight Revan is immune to stun and ability block which is why when you use a direct focus on a Zeta even if he doesn't have tenacity up you're not going to be able to stun him on other light side allies also gain half of these bonuses. The bonuses are doubled while Revan is the leader slot and not the ally slot. So what bonuses are you going to be gaining? Well, 10% of tenacity, health steal, max health, max protection, critical hit avoidance, defense, and critical damage. Guys, those are amazing stats. Um, that's why you want to get him with six stop mods so more stats transfer. Um, he is the probably the most dominant character in the game. I know he's hard to achieve, but he's somebody you should be farming the older public is uh, older public characters for to go after. Next, we're going to look at R2D2. Now, some people argue why he's in the list. He's on the list because he is one of the top versatile characters in the game. He still can be used in arena with the CLS, Raid Han, Chewy teams. He's awesome in raids, and it's because of his Zeta abilities. He's not nearly as good without his Zeta abilities. The first Zeta you should do on him is Number Crunch. At the start of battle and when R2-D2 is revived, other droid, Galactic Republic, Rebel, and Resistance allies gain 10% of R2-D2's max protection, offense, max health, and potency until R2-D2 is defeated. The transfer of those stats, guys, do not underestimate it, especially I've told you that I put all offensive mods and offense in every slot possible for him, so he's transferring all that offense over when I use him in the raid and when I use him with CLS and Raid Han. It's amazing. But combat analysis cannot be overlooked at either. While R2-D2 is active, whenever a light side ally scores a critical hit, dispel all debuffs on them. This doesn't have a certain faction tag, certain factions that he doesn't, you know, have this ability to work with. It dispels de debuffs on, critically, on critical hits. It's amazing for Arena. It's amazing when you're in the Sith Raid Phase 1 with the Resistance team, and that is why he's still in the top 10. Next, we're going to look at CLS. Now, he has fallen out of here before, but he's back in because of his arena team that is viable right now in certain aspects with Chewy Han and L3. Um, and you can use a different tank as well. It's his, it binds all things ability. It's not his leadership ability. His most important ability is, is it binds all things. Whenever Luke resists a detrimental effect, he recovers 5% protection. And whenever Luke inflicts a debuff, he gains 10% turn meter, and other allies gain that, half of that amount. Anytime you can boost turn meter, it's amazing. 
And if you want to dominate with him in a three in arena right now, you could put all three Zedges on him. But the most important and the one you should go for first is it binds all things. Next we're, next, we're going to look at Darth Scion after I take a small drink of water here so my mouth doesn't get dry and I can't speak. And it's his Lord of Pain ability. This is still an amazing ability, and he's, it's viable at three stars. It can make him invincible, basically, and it can make him hit like a truck. It states, at the end of each turn, Scion inflicts pain for three turns on enemies who damaged him that turn. It allows you to get held by hatred quicker. That's what matters about this. And he can wipe the floor, and he's still dominant in top of arena with Treya teams, and he's a great character. Next, we are going to look at Grandmaster Yoda. He's usable in Revan teams. He's also usable in another Jedi team. I'm going to go over here in a second, and it's his battle meditation, and he's great in all aspects of the game. He's great in raids. He's great in the arena. Ever since his rework, he's amazing. When he spreads battle meditation, which spreads all the non-unique buffs on him, gain foresight for two turns. So you're sending foresight too, plus 50% turn meter gain chance and an additional 10% turn meter for each other living Jedi ally. This is an amazing ability, something that shouldn't be overlooked. And if you have him, do not Zeta his leadership ability, Zeta his battle meditation ability. Next, Jolie Bindo. Now, I had not included him last month. I had said, you know what? I don't need to use Jolie. I'm going to keep using Ezra. And then I impulsively Zeta Jolie one day, and it was the most amazing thing I've ever done in my entire life. He's not just usable in Revan teams. It makes him amazing in all aspects of the game, and it's his, that looks pretty bad. Add revive all defeated Jedi allies at 80% health with crit immunity for five turns. Any time you can revive somebody, and not just with like 5% health. This is 80% health with crit immunity, so they're easy, it's easier for them to stay alive until you can get a heal off. Definitely amazing avail ability, also viable at three stars. Next, we're going to look at Bastila Shan. Now, the reason Bastila is on here, because if you don't have Revan, which a lot of people don't, she is a leader you could use still at three stars in the arena and do great. And it's with her leadership ability initiative. Add one turn taunt on Jedi tank allies at the start of an encounter. Add plus 150% tenacity with protection up. When you have protection up, you're gaining 150% tenacity. You're not gonna be able to get debuffs on you basically, ever. You're going to be able to continue to go, spreading different buffs when you use her with Grandmaster Yoda. And she is a great leader, especially if you don't have Revan. She is the top Jedi leader, so I recommend that you Zeta her if you don't. Next, Raid Han. He has fallen out in and out before, but the reason he's in is because of his use in all aspects of the game. And he's usable in Arena right now. It's his shoot's first ability. Plus 10% critical chance, and the first time each turn Han uses his basic attack. He attacks again dealing 50% less damage. Whenever he first he gets critical chance up, and when you have, whenever you have the ability to attack a kin, it's amazing. His damage goes through the roof. It's an amazing ability. You should definitely do it. Now we have Darth Treya. As you can see, I am three shards away from unlocking her. I know she's a hard character to achieve in the game, but she's still, she's in the top Zetas list. It's both of her Zetas. First, compassion is weakness, the leadership ability that states... When an enemy uses an ability outside of their turn, they take damage equal to 35% of their max health. This damage can't defeat enemies. When an enemy gains a buff outside of their turn, they lose 50% offense until the end of their next turn. They're losing offense, they're taking damage equal to their max health, an amazing ability. She's also one of the viable leaders at the top of arena, and I think she'll be good for a long time. Next, we have Lord of Betrayal. At the start of each Sith ally's turn, Treya dispels all debuffs on them and deals damage equal to 5% of their max health for each debuff dispelled. It's a passive cleanse, guys. That's amazing. It works great on Sith teams, and she's a great character. Now, last but not least for the top 10 is Jedi Training Rey, and this is going to lead into the top honorable mention. And Jedi Training Rey's inspirational presence leadership ability. She's used in lower ends of arena, but guys, for the raids, she's absolutely amazing. When a resistance ally uses a special ability, all exposed enemies lose 5% turn meter, which can't be evaded or resisted. When a resistance ally uses a special ability, if they aren't debuffed, reduce their cooldowns by one. You're gonna be cleansing with R2, and so it's gonna be harder to keep debuffs on everybody when you crit hit in this phase one of the heroic Sith raid. Being able to lower their cooldowns, losing 5% turn meter with exposed, it's, it's an amazing ability and definitely something, the most important one on her. 
Now, that's going to lead into the top five honorable mention. The first character on the honorable mention list is BB-8 and his role with the punches. If you're going to have Jedi Training Ray, make sure you Zeta BB-8 as well. Because when BB-8 attacks out of turn, he calls a random resistance ally to assist. So one, with Jedi Training Ray, you're going to be able to call an ally to assist. And then when you call BB-8 to assist, he's going to be able to call somebody else to assist. So you're dealing more damage. It's a great ability, and that's why he's in the honorable mention. Next is Chewbacca. I think he was in my top 10 Zeta list last month. The reason he's on the honorable mention is because he's a great character still. He's hard to get. Uh, at five stars, he's still tricky to get. And you can still win an arena with this ability. It's just trickier. It's his loyal friend ability. When Chewbacca deals damage to an enemy, Chewbacca and all guarded allies recover 3% health and 3% protection. One, he's going to be going a lot because their characters with guard are going to be attacking and he's going to attack. And two, he can do big damage and he can deal damage to everybody with an AoE. And three, against Treya, this extremely helps because she's going to be taking away health. This is going to be adding health and protection. That's why it's in the honorable mention. Next, Nest. Um, Nest's ability is amazing unless you're going in against Revan. But she's great in other aspects in the game. In Territory War, Grand Arena, definitely somebody you should think about zeta Ing. It says that you can add Taunt Ignore at 2% health steal stacking when enemy loses buff or debuff. So when you can ignore a taunt, that's amazing. Uh, when you can steal health and stack that, it's amazing. And then she can dispel with her basic ability to get rid of taunts uh, so other characters can go in and hit different characters. So she is great. That's why she is in the honorable mansion. And she's great at three stars even. She's great at a low star level. So for those of you that have the ability to farm her, please do. Next, we have Bosk. Now, in my opinion, he is the best bounty hunter leader ability to get Chewbacca, who's important for this game, and I think will be more important in the future. I, I did it with the on the hunt leadership ability. I know I've seen other people do it with Boba lead or different leads. I find that this is the easiest and it's viable in other areas of the game too. If you wanna run a bounty hunter team in arena, maybe go with a Bosk lead. Uh, if you don't have Django, um, and it states whenever an enemy suffers a debuff or resists, all bounty hunter allies recover 5% health and 5% protection. You're recovering health, you're recovering protection, plus with the ability anyway, they're gaining max protection, tenacity, and defense. And this is great in Territory Wars, um, I, it's great in Grand Arena, and it's you need bounty hunters in Territory Battles, and he really helps you get through those phases. So that's why he is on here. And then last but not least... Emperor Palpatine. If you don't have Treya, Emperor Palpatine is still a very viable leader in Arena. And it's his Emperor of the Galactic Empire leadership ability. When a debuff on an enemy expires, Empire and Sith allies gain 5% turn meter. A lot of people don't have Treya. Use Palpatine, you're still going to be able to do very well. So that rounds off the top 10 plus 5 honorable mention characters. I want to know, do you think I included characters that shouldn't be on here? Did I not include? I know a lot of people are going to say, Kylo Ren Unmasked. Well, First Order is just not viable right now. They have to get better for me to put his Zeta on here. But I want you guys to let me know. Do you agree with me or disagree with me? So, if you enjoyed the video, please smash the subscribe button, like the video, click the notification bell so you can be alerted to all videos that I post. I'm going to put a link to my Discord server and Patreon page in the description below. Please check that out. They're growing big time. And again, please leave comments in the comment section for not only what you thought about this video, videos you'd like to see in the future. Otherwise, peace out and may the force be with you.